Hello, and welcome to the Coringo Technology Network. I'm Jim Dutton, Chief Software Architect here at Coringo Incorporated. In this video tutorial, I will be demonstrating how Castor's data replication features are designed to protect your digital content. The four storage nodes in this cluster have arranged themselves in two groups of two each. This demonstrates the concept of Castor subclusters which can be used to group nodes that, for whatever reasons, are more likely to fail all at the same time. Maybe because they share a power circuit or a network switch. As Castor replicates uh, stored objects, the replicas are always made in a different subcluster from the one in which the original data is written. In this case, you see an object being written to the 111 node, and the previous write to that node is then replicated uh, to the 113 node, which is in the opposite subcluster. This lessens the likelihood of data loss even if an entire rack of servers or a network switch fails. A node's membership in a subcluster is declared in its configuration file. Here you can see that node 113 is a member of the subcluster called West Wing. The subclusters are also visible in Castor's administrative console, as, which is what we're looking at right here. We use them as a way to group nodes and summarize statistics. So here you see at the top level, uh, we have two subclusters, East Wing and West Wing. If I open up one of those, we see the nodes inside of it. There are two nodes in each one. And then further, if we wish, we can watch the volumes in each of the nodes. While we're talking about replication, it may have occurred to you that Castor's default asynchronous replication behavior, that is, uh, replicating the data slightly after the initial write completes, while optimizing write latency, uh, does leave a small possibility that a single disk failure at exactly the wrong time could cause data loss. If even this small possibility is unacceptable, Applications and administrators can choose to eliminate it by using Castor's Replicate on Write feature. Here we see the client performing a POST request to node 111, exactly as we've seen before. In this case, however, the application has chosen to use Replicate on Write, causing node 111 to synchronously write exactly the same data to a, a second node, in this case node 113. Both writes must complete before the client receives the 201 response and gets the object's UUID. Note again the synchronous replicas are always created in the opposite subcluster.